Hello there, I'm here with Nick Mongan, who is Virtual and Digital Learning Consultant at Hemsley Fraser. Uh, welcome, Nick. Hi, everyone. And we are talking today about the roles um, within the virtual learning context of facilitator and producer. So, uh, Nick, would you mind just sort of explaining what the two roles are and why they differ? Yeah, sure. There's a couple of things to consider within the virtual environment and the facilitator and producer role are probably the most commonly talked about roles um, within this particular modality. So when we talk about facilitators, a lot of what the facilitator is doing is motivating people to actively participate in, in the class activity. So whether that's through some of the group discussion or individual contributions, they really need to be able to, to, to be confident in working with the technology being used to deliver the session. So we really need to make sure that we have expert facilitators, not just in the topic being delivered, that's obviously important and crucial to the session, but also as well, and the platform that's being used as well. So there's a lot of things for the facilitator to manage in the session, such as group dynamics and being conscious of when input levels um, are, are up or are down, um, and they can react to that. So um, with any kind of facilitation, a good working knowledge if you like of adult learning principles is important but the way in which that shows itself in the virtual environment is a little bit different as to how it would uh, or how it has traditionally shown itself in the face-to-face -face environment so being really clear about what they're doing um, and when they're doing it is really important for those guys so what we're looking for from any expert facilitator is really to draw participants into a discussion versus simply lecturing to them over the course of the session and that sometimes is a differentiator between a really interactive session and one that's more of a lecture which we're not aiming for in our virtual sessions we're very much talking about transfer of learning and a learning environment so they need to be really good at that and need to be comfortable uh, managing uh, various things that will be happening in the background which the participants don't necessarily know about but the facilitators managing. And do you have facilitate, uh, facilitators very, uh, they focus or specialise in the virtual learning side of things rather than the classroom side? Yeah we do, yeah. We have facilitators working across the HF network who exclusively work virtually um, and uh, we have um, a growing pool of, of global facilitators as part of, uh, of our faculty who, who come into that. So we have um, some, some good principles and guidelines that we, we work very closely with our colleagues in the resourcing team to, to manage. Um, and we have a group of facilitators who we're, we're very much pleased to, to, to have as part of our faculty. So there is an accreditation process in that. And similarly, for our producers as well, that, that also play an important role in the classroom. We also get asked quite often about the producer role and what that brings to the environment. Um, and they're adding a lot of value across a, a number of areas. So whether that's before the session started and they're doing some pre-class practice with the facilitator ahead of the event to make sure that everything's set up, that the layout's correct. So there's quite a lot of setup that's required for virtual training so that the group discussions work effectively on the day and seamlessly are, be, are being delivered. Um, whether that's in the same way as you would with a face-to-face environment, there's a bit of classroom configuration that goes on behind the scenes to make sure that things are set up for the success. So producers often really add value in that regard. And then during the session itself, um, there's a lot of collaboration that goes on with the facilitator to, to really create the best um, session that it can be in terms of engagement levels for the audience. So they're very much working in tandem with the facilitator um, to, to make sure that audience participation levels are where they need to be um, and really making it as easy as it possibly can be for participants to enjoy the experience and not let the technology get in the way um, so they can have a seamless entry into the event um, and start from there. So they will be very much um, talking to the group in real time um, throughout the session. They will be supporting the facilitator in their um, facilitation through, um, through, through managing the platform, through introducing exercises potentially, potentially debriefing on some of the exercises as well. And, and the other thing that I think everybody sort of sees as a given for the producer is, is resolving technical issues, um, which they are also very much capable of doing so. But a lot of that gets done, let's say, taking um, a, a rough estimate of saying 80% of those issues will happen um, very early on in the course. Um, very early on, if there are any at all, that, uh, that once they're resolved, that leads into a much smoother transition into the learning and the event itself. And then there's also quite a lot of work for the facilitator and producer to do after the event if there's any post-course um, reporting or document delivery that needs to be done, and quite often the producer will pick up that as well. So both roles are really key to, to an overall 
um, success of a virtual event and that's what we would say yeah. is our standard. Um, and you mentioned there the, the pr producer and the facilitator working together to increase engagement. Does that, is it too simplistic to say that also has implications therefore for maximum delegate numbers in terms of if you've got both of them working together you can have more people on the on the training yeah there is a there's a there's an additional benefit to, to being able to have more people in a in the space sharing learning because you've got two people managing that part of the process so historically we, we've worked with smaller numbers it's often the, the kind of million dollar question that people will ask about how many people is the right amount of people to have in a virtual classroom and um, we've seen sessions running up to um, large group sizes with about 100 people on it. Typically, we're running to, to somewhere closer to about 30 participants in, a, in an event being produced and facilitated, which, which we feel is a manageable amount of, of people to have when you have that dynamic of facilitator and producer, which is great. It means you have, can have a larger audience, you get more collaboration um, or opportunity for collaboration with a larger audience. Sometimes you can have really good, and there's no reason why you can't have a really engaging event with a much smaller group, may I say, that you can have. And we do run sessions with four to five people on it as well, which, um, which are also a different type of delivery, um, but equally as engaging. But yes, it does mean that physically you can, you can get around a much larger group than you may traditionally have been able to. Yeah. Um, and there's um, a Hemsley Fraser offer an accreditation service as well. Yeah. Could you just explain what that is, what's involved? Yeah, that's an accreditation for delivering virtually um, that, uh, that, that has come about through some opportunity that we saw with, with a, a number of global clients who were faced with a typical challenge of, of upskilling their existing workforce to deliver a work virtually. So as a result, we developed our own HF accredited program for delivering virtually so it tackles um, how to be successful in a virtual environment over three specific modules so we talk about standards for delivery so that is all about setting yourself up for success in the platform that you'll be using what standards should you apply when you're getting ready to to, to facilitate virtually as well as some of the the more practical elements of working with any of the virtual platforms that we use we talk about advanced facilitation which is another module in the series which we really get <coughs> into a deeper level of, of learning when it comes to managing group dynamics, when it comes to working cross-culturally. There's some quite deep thinking that goes on about how you can best position training when working with specific cultures um, and, uh, and setting yourself up for success, success in that regard. And then the other aspect of it, which is often the thing that people have at the forefront of their mind, is what to do when. It's almost those technical challenges that, that it may presents and just getting people really confident about managing any technical challenges that they may likely to be facing in the virtual environment and all that leads to an accreditation uh, and a teach back where um, we we ask people to deliver 30 minutes of content to a uh, to a group of, of fellow participants and an accreditor and at the end of that um, ideally you would come out with an accreditation to deliver virtually being uh, being offered by hf so that's something that we expect all our faculty to go through um, and, uh, and we manage any new joiners to our faculty through that process as well. That's great. Thanks, Nick. Thanks very much.